Hello and welcome to ITNs. So we are, we are looking for the secure uh, options uh, which Azure provides, right? I mean, in the past few sessions, we have been working on what are the options that uh, Azure can provide for securing our applications which are hosted on Azure, okay? So in this session, uh, we are going to look at how uh, Azure can provide, what are the options that Azure can provide to secure our endpoints, right? Like, like we have a storage account that is one of our endpoint for our service endpoint, right? That is one of our service accounts that we use, right? So we have, in this session, we are going to look forward to what are the other options that we can actually see that uh, when we are creating the service endpoints and it is tagged to a particular storage account, then it should only go to that particular storage account. It will, should not actually touch for the other storage account. So, those are the things that we are going to discuss in this session. All right, great. I will see you in the session and please uh, uh, click on the subscribe icon uh, and don't forget to click on the thumbs icon so, so that it keeps me motivating to provide additional videos uh, free of cost, right? Great, thank you all and I'll see you in the session then. Thank you. Welcome back to ITNs. So in this session, we are going to talk about the VNet service endpoint, which is part of the application production service, right? All right, let's get started. So VNet service endpoint extends VNet private address space and the identity of VNet to the Azure service and it's over the direct connection. So service endpoints enables private IP addresses in the VNet to reach the endpoint of the Azure service without needing a public IP address on the VNet, right? Service endpoints allows to secure critical Azure service resources to only virtual networks. Traffic from VNet to the Azure service always remains on the Azure backbone network, yeah? VNet service endpoints provides secure and direct connectivity to Azure services over an optimized route over the Azure backbone network. Yeah. Now this is a pictorial overview of how the service endpoint works. Yeah. So service endpoint policies allows you to filter egress virtual traffic to Azure storage accounts over service endpoints. And it allows data exfiltration to only specific Azure storage accounts. Yeah. So you have storage account A and storage account N, but it, if uh, you have set up the policy for only for a storage account A, then it will only go for the storage account A and it will not go to storage account N. Yeah. Endpoint policies provide granular access control for virtual network traffic to Azure storage when connecting over service endpoints. All right. Now let's talk about the key benefits of uh, service endpoints. Yeah. So service endpoints provide the following benefits. One, it provides improved security for your Azure service accounts. So with this, what you get is your VNet pro private address spaces can overlap, right? You can't use overlapping space to uniquely identify traffic that originates from your VNet, correct? So service endpoint provides the ability to secure Azure service resources to your virtual network by extending VNet identity to the service. Once you enable service endpoints in your virtual network, you can add a virtual network role to secure the Azure service resources to your virtual network. And the rule addition provides improved security by fully removing public internet access to resources and allowing traffic only from your virtual network. Optimal routing for Azure service traffic from your virtual network. Well, you know, I mean, any route in your virtual network uh, that uh, force internet traffic to your open, to your on-prem premise or 
your virtual appliance also force Azure Service Traffic to take the same route as the internet traffic, right? So Service Endpoint provides optimal routing for Azure traffic. Endpoints always take service traffic directly from your virtual network to the service on the Azure Backbone network. Keeping traffic on the Azure Backbone network allows you to continue auditing and monitoring outbound internet traffic from your virtual networks through forced tunneling and without impacting service traffic. It's Simple to set up uh, with less management overhead, so you no longer need reserved public IP addresses in your virtual networks to secure Azure resources through IP fiber. There are no NAT or um, network address translation or gateway devices required to set up these service endpoints. You can configure service endpoints through a simple click on your subnet, and there is no additional overhead to maintaining the endpoints. Yeah. Now let's talk about the limitations. Yeah, we have talked, uh, we've seen about the benefits. Now, at the other hand, let's talk about what are the limitations which we can have with the service endpoints. This feature is only available to virtual networks deployed through the Azure Resource Manager deployment model. Okay, that is one of the key important uh, limitations. So you can you can only have this feature if you in case you are getting your deployment through uh, Azure Resource Manager. And endpoints are enabled on subnets configured in Azure Virtual Networks. Endpoints can't be used for traffic from your premise to Azure service. Okay. And for Azure SQL, a service endpoint applies only to Azure service traffic within a virtual networks region. For Azure storage, endpoints also extend to include pair of regions when you deploy the virtual networks to support read access geo redundant storage or regrs and geo redundant storage or grs traffic yeah for azure data lake uh, uh, storage that is adls or uh, gen 1 and we know it's uh, we can use gen 1 and gen 2 right but this limitation is in case if you're using gen 1 the VNet integration capability is only available for virtual networks within the same region. Also note that virtual network integration with the ADLS Gen 1 uses the virtual network service endpoint security through our virtual network and Azure Active Directory. Yeah? So these claims are then used to authenticate your virtual network to your data lake storage Gen 1 account and allow access. The Microsoft Azure Active Directory tag listed under services supporting service endpoints is used only for supporting service endpoints to ADLS Gen 1. Okay, so Azure AD doesn't support um, service endpoints natively, right? Great, and uh, now let's look at these scenarios. I mean, where, what sort of scenarios we can use to deploy this uh, service endpoints? Yeah, so can be used for peered connected or multiple virtual networks so it uh, i mean this can be used to secure azure services to multiple subnets within a virtual network or across multiple uh, networks you can enable service endpoints on each of the secure uh, each of these subnets independently and secure azure service resources to all of these subnets Filtering outbound traffic from a virtual network to Azure service. Well, if you want to inspect or filter the traffic sent to the Azure service from the virtual network, you can deploy a network virtual appliance within the virtual network. You can also apply service endpoints to the subnets where the network appliance is deployed and secure Azure service resources only to this subnet. So this scenario might be useful if you want to use um, network uh, virtual appliance filtering to restrict Azure service access from your uh, virtual network only to specific Azure resources. Right? Great. Uh, now, next one is securing Azure resources to service deployed directly into virtual networks. So you can directly deploy various Azure services into specific subnets in virtual network. You can secure Azure service resources 
to managed service subnets by setting up a service endpoint on the managed service subnet. Next one is on disk traffic from an uh, Azure virtual machine, right? So as you know, I mean Azure uh, virtual machine disk traffic for managed and unmanaged disk isn't affected by service endpoints. Uh, routing changes for Azure storage, right? If you have seen this in the earlier points. So this traffic includes disk IO as well as mount and unmount. You can limit REST access to page blocks to select network through service endpoints and Azure storage network routes. Right? So for additional uh, information and additional uh, training you can go through these links. Uh, you can actually um, go through the entire documentation uh, as well as the training which is hosted on, on the YouTube on my 369 Pro IT page. Right? And uh, you can actually go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can access all the videos uh, and learn Azure free of cost. Right? And if you are liking the videos, please do click on the uh, like button and uh, feel free to share the uh, link to your friends and colleagues. Right? Great. So until next time, keep watching and keep learning. Thank you.